And the entire time, while they were saying their drushes, he was just eating and drinking and not paying any attention. Rebichil's father calls him in. He says out of, you know, in great anguish, you embarrassed me. Not only that you didn't learn, you became a glutton. The Daichel got up from his place, put his hand over his face. He became all confused and started to say all the Averis that they ever did. Good to welcome everybody. Um, thank you for coming. Um, Azeh, because we are an Arab Rosh Hashanah, I'm going to say a story that has to do with Rosh Hashanah and the Baal Shem Tev. Uh, more accurately, actually, the Baal Shem Tev's son-in-law. So the, the Baal Shem Tev's son-in-law, actually, uh, his daughter Adel's husband, his name was Rabbi Chil. And there, uh, he was the father of the Degel Machin Ephraim and the Baruch of Mezhbush. And they called him the Daichel. Why do we call him the Deitschel? Because a Deitsch means uh, Deitschen, right? The Germans. He's German, and he was from Germany. They called him the Deitschel, the German dude. The German dude. <laughs> so, the, so the father of Rabbi Chil, of the Deitschel, was a, was a very important man. He was a Shemaim and a rich man. And all of his sons were very well-versed in Torah and had very good Midas. One time, their father called him over and he said, I'm giving all of you enough money to last you for five years, you'll go to wherever you need to go. And if you find a good shidduch and, and you find, you know, that it's from a good family and, you know, she has good midas, you know, get married as, as you want. I, you know, you don't need my blessing. I trust you guys. But I want, w- w- with one condition, in five years from when you leave, from now basically, you should all come back to my house and uh, I want to see what uh, what uh, what you guys were able to accomplish. What, what did you make of yourselves? That's what happened. Every single one went. And the Daicho went to Poland and ended up uh, marrying Odl, the daughter of the Bashantos. Anyway, so yeah. that's the story. That's it. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Well, that was good. <laughs> Who is this guy that he was able to discuss the marriage of the Bashantos daughter? So, so it looks I, I don't I don't know what yeah, I'm not sure, but he, he was he, he became a Talmud of the Bashanto, obviously. He he and you'll see I it. Hope so. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't some so rando. Was his like, father someone special? His father was a was a <laughs> yeah, like a, a good Jew, you know. Um <laughs> He had this chus to have all his children be becoming the Chacham Mons. But anyway. So now when the time came for the uh for, for, for them to go back to their father after five years. So the Daichel comes to the Baal Shem Tif and and explains to him that he needs to go, you know, do Kibadav. He has to, and he asked for a, a bracha before he left. So Baal Shem Tif said, you know, gave him his blessing, and he said that he should be able to go and come back peacefully. So this Daichel asked the Baal Shem Tif also that he should give him a bracha to come back for Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because it was in the summer, traveling then was very arduous, and he wanted to, you know, secure a bracha that the Baal Shem Tif is going to guarantee he'll come back. And the Baal Shem Tif didn't answer him. And and it happened three times. It happened three times. Rubichil, the Daicho, asked for a bracha to come back, and he didn't answer. So he already understood. He ain't coming back. He's not coming back in time for Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, he took a shefer with him because uh, he said, uh, who knows where I'm going to be for Rosh Hashanah. So they they got to their father, and uh, their father made a big su'uda, and he, he invited all the big of the of of the city to come and hear his, you know, see his children, and they, he was making a big deal out of it. And in the middle of this, five years, huh? yeah, yeah, but also he wanted them to say Divrei Torah. You know, so, in the middle of the Suda, the father asked the oldest brother to say some kind of, you know, drasha. And when he finished, he asked the second son and the third. And it looks like the Daichel was the fourth, the fourth son in line. And the entire time, while they were saying their drashas, he was just eating and drinking and not paying any attention. <laughs> so <laughs> they're 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 learning. When the father asked him to say something, he said he has nothing to say. So they skipped him and went to the, to, to the next brother. And they all said what they were able to. And then, and also when they were speaking, he didn't pay any attention. It was just eating and drinking. So everybody around was like, what's going on over here? Yeah. We, we got sold. It's different. Now, 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 this is uh, not a very, uh, it's not very popular, but it's, when Sadiqim eat, there's... They, they, there's Yechudim, right? I mean, Lubavitch is not so much kaching uh, in that. But anyway, so so the, everyone around didn't understand this idea. He was doing, anyway, he was doing his thing. Now, once they went to their house, the father, this Rebichil's father calls him in and he says out of, you know, in great anguish, he says, you you embarrassed me. 
not only that you didn't learn, you became a, a, a glutton. You know, you became a, or as, as or belaz, you became a glutton. And the father started to cry very bitterly. So the Daichel tells his father right away. He calms him down. He says, "Don't, don't, don't be upset. I actually, really, I'm. I outdid everybody else." <laughs> <laughs> He says, do like this. Tomorrow, make another uh, Suda and invite everybody and I'll show you, you know, what I was macabre and you'll have a lot of, uh, no, you'll have a lot of pleasure from what I, more than every, more than, more than all my brothers. So the father did that. He, he again invited all the, uh, all the, I mean, the Chacham in the city and he asked every single one to get up and say a, a drush. So when the, when the oldest son started to, to say, the Daishal got up from his place put his hand over his face. All of a sudden, he became all confused. Start, stop saying the pilpul, stop saying this drasha, and started to confess and to say all the averis that they ever did from whenever they were. Yeah, now obviously these were holy people, but they obviously had sins, you know, like everybody. So so they started to say, I don't know what the purpose of this was, honestly. It, it doesn't say in the story. Whatever it was, obviously there was a purpose. It was a little bit, you know, like putting the other guy down. I, it's, it's not the not Lubavitch way, that's for sure. <laughs> Anyway, so so and after a, certain, a few seconds, he he got back to himself and he just stopped and sat down. And the Daisho went back to his place, and the second son got up and he repeated the same thing. He put his hand over his face until until they got to him. So every you know for whatever reason he, he repeated this this thing with all the this stick with all the brothers. And and then so so now they they everyone around sees that this Daisho has uh, supernatural powers. And then he starts telling them about who the Baal is and what a holy man he is, a tzaddik Elam, and that he actually married his daughter. And he started to speak about his holiness and his avodah and the way of his teachings. And everybody listened to things they never heard in their lives because the Baal was a whole new, I mean, was, was revealed a whole new way, way of, of, of terror, a whole new, you know, uh, path in Avedah Hashem. He's Yeah, but he's from Germany. Yeah. He's now in Germany by his father. Yeah, 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 right, right, yeah, yeah. So it's near with the Bashanta of War, where his students will be doing. Yeah, and they're, and they're yek and stuff, guess, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's everything. Right, 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 yeah. But his father, his father had a lot of, uh, no, his father was, was had a lot of pleasure from this. So I, I guess the reason why, he, the reason why he, he did this, you know, put his hand over their face was obviously to show that, you know, a little taste of what he got, but oh, I don't know why. I don't know why he had to embarrass them. Yeah, why did it have to be a virus? Why did I, it have to be? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was also a takana for them. Who knows? Maybe. maybe he was trying to help them. So after a few days, the brothers they all went to their house, and the daichel also went back to go back to the Bashemtiv. Now we know he's not going to make it. So it was the middle of Elul, <clears throat> and he had to go through a ship. So what happened when he got into the ship? All of a sudden, there's a big storm, and the uh, the, the 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 boat gets. You know, it drifts away, and Arab Shana comes, and all of a sudden, the the the, the yeah, the, the 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 ocean, you know, is st- st- he stops being angry, and <laughs> and the boat gets to a port, it gets to a certain city, and there's and the Eden don't live there. It's not a place where Eden live. So the Daishal understood that the whole reason why this storm happened was for him, and that Hashem wants him to be there, and he was Makabal This not so pleasant for Shoshana with love. So he went out of the the boat and he rented a room somewhere very near the sea, near the ocean, so that he can go and, and go to Mikvah whenever he needs. So when it came time for Mincha Rosh Shoshana, he went to Mikvah and he started to daven Mincha and afterwards he daven Maidiv Rosh Hashanah. And, and the way that the, the Bashan Tev and his Talmidim would daven was very loud, a lot of crying and, 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 and you know, yelling. So, so people around that were near the house, they, they, they stopped to hear, you know, someone who sounds like a crazy person just screaming and crying. You can tell he's the, great, he's the grandfather of Rabbi Nachman. There you go. <laughs> and because uh, <laughs> they, never, they never saw such a thing. A person would just, would just scream by himself. They thought he was crazy. Now, in the morning, again, he went to Taival. He went to, to Mikvah. He came back to Daven Shachris and the same thing, you know. And then he takes a, he took his shafer and 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 did the uh, and he did the tkiyas and then he did musaf again and and a lot of people again gathered around to hear this strange phenomena and the king of that place he happened to be passing by and he sees that there's a lot of people next to the river next to the ocean that there's a, you know a lot of people gathered around 
So he wanted to see what's going on. He asked, and they say there's some person over there. Uh, yesterday he was crying and screaming, and today also he went in the in the ocean, and and came back and, and, and screamed and took a horn instead of blowing it. Now the king was an educated person. He understood that there are many different uh, religions and many different sciences and many different uh, languages, and he understood this person is not crazy, and he probably has some kind of uh, logical explanation. Yeah. So he told everybody, leave him alone. He's not crazy. And he has some kind of deity, some kind of faith. And that's that's his way of serving. He's a, a cultured king. So, I mean, a king's not worth much if he isn't. But anyway. Um, so, so, fine. So afterwards, he after, I guess, Bichil finished davening, he calls him to come to him. And uh, so the Daichel goes to the king. And the king asked him who he is and uh, where he came from. And he said he's a Yid. He's from Poland. And he came because of a storm. So the king... Uh, invited him to come to the palace to speak to him, and the Daichel says, after Rosh Hashanah, so tomorrow night, I can come, you know, after after Yantif. So Mitzvah Rosh Hashanah, he goes to, to the king, and the king he was very happy to see him, and he asked if he can bring 300 Jews with him to make a little Jewish settlement here, because he really liked speaking to him, and, 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 and he, he loved hearing his davening. So Daichel said like this, my master the king, there's two reasons why I can't do that. Number one, I'm not uh, an influential person that I can just, you know, bring people to tell them I'm not a king like you that I could just t- take tell 300 people uh, we're going to a new place, leave your life. And number two, if it was the Ratzin, if Hashem wanted that the Yidin should live here, then they would be brought here even against their will if it had to be. Chas and, v'shalem. Uh, and because there's no Jews in your town, it means that Hashem doesn't want them to be here. And uh, therefore, I, I don't have the ability to, to do what you want. And the, the king was okay with that answer, and he let him go. Mm-hmm. So the Daichel went from there, and he soon after that, he got back to his house, and he came. He went to see the Baal Shem Tev. His father-in-law, the Baal Shem Tev, told him, with a lot of love, you know, gave him, welcomed him, and he said like this, you should know that in that place there were Nitzutzis Kedoshim, there were holy sparks, there were many holy sparks where you were. And if you wouldn't have gone there, there would have been actually a reason for Jews to come there in, cha- in iron chains, against their will. But because you went there for a Shoshana, and with the Koyach of your davening, with the power of your davening, and with your intense kavonis, uh, you accomplished that all the sparks there were elevated, went back to where they need to be. Wow. And therefore, no Jews need to be there to, to elevate those sparks, because you did it already. And uh, until Mashiach comes, no, no Jews will need to live there. So we're standing before Rosh Hashanah. We should be zeicha that all the nitzutzes should be elevated, where we can finally greet Mashiach and the uh, of a new year and accept Hashem as our King in Yerushalayim, uh, without any need to be in chains, without any tzaris. Like and subscribe. Start a new year. Smash the like button. Have a, have a beautiful year. Only revealed brachis. And uh, may we have the best year of our lives yet.